Hey, Portugal, what a great country. And I fell in love with Lisbon, a beautiful historic hilly city, chock full of restaurants and markets. And you drive a half an hour out of town, folks, you're at the beach. In this episode, we'll visit a bunch of dope restaurants, some fancy Michelin type, some bare bones, but all offering great food. We'll surf, eat, taste wines, shop at a market with a rising star chef, have a dinner composed solely of canned seafood. Stay tuned, you know the drill. I'm Mike Colomeco, industry insider. Been in the business my whole life and I know what it takes to succeed. Each week we'll take you into real kitchens, filmed in real time. Backstage passes to a day in the life of chefs, restaurateurs, and their teams. The competition's fierce. Careers, life savings, and reputations hang in the balance. These are my people, and this is their passion. And that's what's next on Mike Colomeco's Real Food. Mike Colomeco's Real Food is brought to you by the continuous, generous support of the following underwriters. Extra virgin olive oil from Colavita, an Italian family brand. Rachel Ray's signature specialty food line, designed for preparing meals at home. Lou's Naturals Family of Brands offers all-natural, minimally processed meats, free of antibiotics, hormones, and nitrites, from our family to yours. Imported from Italy, Anna Pasta is made from 100% Italian durum wheat semolina and pure spring water, slowly dried to cook al dente. Recipes online at cento.com. So the filming of this show took place on May 1st, which was a huge national holiday in Portugal. So we'll take advantage of the free time in the morning, surfing the great beach breaks for hours at Cascais with a team of young winemakers. Then a short drive north to Fortaleza de Guincho for a sit-down Michelin-starred lunch with the boys overlooking yet another great surf spot, Praia de Guincho. <laughs> nice look. <laughs> Yo. The boys were nice enough to scrape up a wetsuit for me. I got an XL32 and an NSP longboard. Now we're going to hit the crowded lineup for a three hour session. I got work. I'm tired. <laughs> it's all good. After chasing those rights all morning at Kashkaiš, I was dead and hungry. So we drove with the boys up north to this beautiful old fort, Praia de Guincho, home to the renovated fortress and one-star Michelin restaurant, Fortaleza de Guincho, where the boys brought a bunch of their wines to taste and, of course, compare. Legally, <laughs> legally how did you write reserve on your label? <laughs> so the competition now extended from the beach to the dining room. Here you can see my, the winemaking style, more yeah. Marooki wine, Marooki style. <laughs> And here you can see the varieties. You can feel. Who got also. the best wave? To <laughs> <laughs> Who got the best wave? Anybody? I, I got the worst. <laughs> so Carlos made an amazing lunch for us. Uh, now we're down after lunch, and we're going to replicate what we had. Talk to me about this dish. We have all the vegetables from the from this season, homemade ham. Ham, we heard. Uh, beans and the tiaki shops. So we have the langoustine, cook it like a barigou. Old style, southern French. Old style, very simple. Belly ghoul. I'll get out of the way and let you cook, chef. Okay. The garlic, thyme, and day are the herbs. In goes the house-made ham, peas. A little more of the belly ghoul. What's that? Basil oil. Great black steel pans. So first, belly ghoul. Pea shoots. It's spring. Finally, it's finally. And then finally the barigul, barigul sauce with the basil oil and with the. Oh, beautiful, yes. beautiful. You yeah. see this plate and you think spring. Yeah, you look at it. I mean, the herbs are great. It's fresh. It's light. It's olive oil. It's a light brought barigul's classic. That makes a lot of people happy. <laughs> that makes a lot of customers happy every night. That's why you're here. That's why first time, not my last. <laughs> okay. This is amazing. One more dish. One more. Turbo? Yes, this dish is all about turbo, sea urchins, and fennel. White stock and butter. Fennel, onions, potatoes with lemon and 
Same time? Yes. Great fish, isn't it, Tobo? Yes. One of the we greatest. Used, we used to call it the king of the sea. Yeah, it's one of the greats. <laughs> I like to cook it only only the side of the skin. Only one side, done. Muslin fennel with lemon grass. The vegetables just glazed a little bit butter and lemon. Oh, that's right, the urchin goes on top of those. Just a little bit muslin. Clean. Simple. Clean. And tasty. Beautiful. This man. is the first idea. The sea urchin roe is amazing with the sea urchin on top. The fennel is great. I mean, this is just a super clean, super, super beautiful dish. And now the sauce. Maria. Thanks for the, thanks for, thanks for the Royale. <laughs> Chef, what a beautiful place to work. Keep up the great work. Michelin star, Relay and Chateau. Thank you a lot. We had and, a great uh, meal. I hope you will come back to see us again. I got no choice, man. <laughs> I'm falling in love with Portugal. <laughs> Just when I thought I'd seen everything, which you can never say you have, I am in the vineyard that is the furthest westernmost vineyard on the continent of Europe. And these vineyards go back thousands of years. No one can trace the exact DNA origins of some of these grape varietals. But the vine I'm sitting in front of is 130 years old, and it's nuts. It pops out of the ground there and moves around like some giant python. So to plant here, they dig underneath the sand until they find clay. Once they find clay, they'll set the vines in the clay, let the vines grow for a couple of years till they begin to get healthy, then slowly reintroduce the sand. That's where the flavor of these wines come from. People along the centuries adapted the viticulture to the conditions that we have here. We have a poor soil, sandy soil, so it's a difficult uh, region to mature the grapes, but <laughs> just, it makes a good wine and less it makes than a ideal. Wine. Less, yeah, than less than ideal. Less than ideal. Less than ideal. You yeah. got, it, got everything yeah. going yeah. against you. Yeah. I mean, we were just in the Douro looking at how they yeah. do the tread, how, yeah. they, how they ever yeah. could grow wines yeah. up those, then you yeah. come here and think, look at the length people have gone yeah. over yeah. the years yeah. to plant vines yeah. to get wine. Yeah. The resilience. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. We, we must have a human capacity. We need this stuff. We love this stuff. <laughs> In a sunny little corner of a side street in Lisbon sits Tasca de Esquina, where we're in the hands of Chef Hugo Nascimento, doing his riff on small plates and wine pairings. All right, we're here with Hugo at Tasca de Esquina. Pronounce it for me. Tasca de Esquina. Tasca de Esquina, which means, from what I understand it, uh, and they're underselling a humble little restaurant on the corner. Yes, that's it. Well, they're humble. They've been here for five years and you can't get a reservation, so apparently humility has worked for you. Thanks for letting us in tonight. You're going to demo some, some plates. What's the first one for us? So, first one. We always serve a soup on the first one. In, in the summer, we serve cold soups. So we have like a white bean soup. White beans, onions, garlic. Garlic, olive oil. And then we're going to serve this with shrimp. Little baby, little beautiful little fresh tiny shrimp. Yes. Chorizo, coriander. What's not to love? We had a bad winter in New York, lots of snow, We're very cold. Perfect, beautiful. Nice. Love it. Next course. Now we are using a lot of uh, cured fish. We use mackerel because of the fat. Fat, oily, delicious. Oily, delicious. We have some bones here. What are we going to serve with? Pastinaca? White carrot, maybe. Okay, white carrot puree. Peanuts. Ground. Orange and vanilla. It's really interesting. I love the peanut and the fish. All right, you're not done yet. What's next? Next, we're going for the third portion. The sweet potato. Purple sweet potato. Purple sweet potato, spinach, and the Mar Mar marlin. marlin. With this, butter sauce, a little bit of butter. Salt, pepper. Pepper, warm it a little bit. In broad terms, describe Portuguese, Portuguese cuisine today. Now it's starting to move, because like if you came here, like eight years ago, ten years, years ago, ago, ten years ago, be very traditional. Flat. Right. That's a pretty plate of food. Really appreciate you letting us in. We're gonna have a meal, and you may see us again. We may be back. I don't know. You no. here Saturday night? Yes, I am. We may come see you Saturday. Nice. <laughs> Smells like instructions. <laughs> and this is your fifth restaurant. Yes. Number five. Jose Alviles is a rock star chef in Portugal. We'll meet him at the market shopping for fish and then head to one of his spots, Belcanto, another Michelin starred locale with some of the best food I've ever had in Portugal and wines to match. It's like a, it's like it's a, a mackerel. A, yeah, it's, it's between like a mackerel and a tuna, small tuna and a mackerel. What do you it's call like it? It's like a yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. The rigor mortis, you see. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys. Listen, class, that's how you clean a sardine, all right? 
I see a lot of these guys. This, we call this is a black one and the white one. Right. We call peixe espada. Actually, like the direct translation is sword fish. Ah. They can be very, very big. Beautiful fish. Huge from, tuna from Azores, the island, one of That's the islands from, tuna from the Azores. Azores, yes. And I'm gonna eat it. Oh, oh my God! Good oh monkfish. man! <laughs> Look at that face. That's a beautiful monkfish. Whoa! In Portugal, sefiu or congro it has a lot of bones, so it's not so easy, easy to cook. Right? Cod? No, no. It's the big one. It's grouper. Grouper. Actually, I think that that's a good story. We, you, you, we don't have you cod. You built the world on cod. No cod down here. No cod. No fresh cod. It's we are the only country in the world that the most emblematic dish we don't have in our shore. I, I think tell, tells a little bit about our history that we we went to search right. for something right. and we traveled a lot. We found the cod. We sold it and we, we brought it to Portugal. So you would so fish we, to the north, yeah. and then further north, and then... Norway, Russia, right. uh, Iceland, is where... Eventually they, they, America. Eventually America, yeah. yeah. So it's before lunch. Um, I lost count, but I think there's 22 people in this kitchen? Yeah. Sure. Something like that. I mean, there are more bodies in here. <laughs> there's no room on that stove. There's no room anywhere. I just keep going like this. Excuse me. Behind you. So, we're gonna do this demo and try not to get in anybody's way. Tell me about what we're doing here. We have some seawater. Actually, what we call seawater. It's the water that the mussels release when they are cooking. So it's a bit of like a green apple puree. Uh, Coconut milk. And then we work with the goose barkles, oh. razor clams, the, um, the, like the shrimps, sea urchin, and the rocks. So, like this. And then you finish with the kafir, lime kafir. It's not what you used to. No way. Different flavors, different yeah, textures. Different, right, different richness. I don't know if I can say that, but I'm very happy because I don't sit and eat, but I'm sitting, I'm eating, and it's very good. I'm very happy. <laughs> <laughs> what a surprise. But it's true, no, no, but it's true. So tell us. I mean, Portuguese cuisine's evolved. Where is it going? Where is it? Where do you see? How would you describe Portuguese cuisine today? In terms of like traditionally, the Portuguese cuisine is like Italy. We have we don't have like a Portuguese traditional cuisine. We have a lot of Portuguese region cuisines. Of course, we have also like French influence, Spanish influence, especially in the last years from the the new generation of chef, yeah, yeah. Adrian and everything. But we, as a country, we have a great. Uh, uh, Food culture. People love to eat. People have. We have great products, great wines. So I see the best for the Portuguese cuisine in the few, next few years. Okay, this will be your first steel wine. It's a green wine. It is called Suelher, first vineyard, 2012. It's not playing around. We were talking yesterday about a lot of the Portuguese wines don't have expressive noses. A lot of the whites have kind of closed noses, not as open as a lot of the other varietals. And but this one, yeah. this Excuse me. <laughs> this is, the the this nose screams. of this Sueller is like... So, what have we here? So this is like... Um, this cabeche. We made here with malted extreme some bowls with the olive oil, the flavor from it, this cabeche. Indeed. Surprising, Normal. coming from a little white ball that looks like nothing. We have it two, two different ways. ways here. We have one of beetroot with apple. We have here uh, one with uh, onion, garlic, apple, beetroot, and then onion pickle, like a scabbage. Yeah, scabbage, the, right. Scabbage. And we braise mackerel. Look at that skin. Only the belly. Fatty. It's like a toro. Yeah, toro super mackerel. fatty. The rosel. And here's like the olive oil that you put, and you put Upside down. Normally we serve this mackerel only after like three days um, of being smoked. The flesh firms the up. The flesh firms up. You have more, you feel the fat, the good fat of the fish. And for me it's one of the best ways to eat mackerel. All right, well, we're going on the hot side now. The fish is a sea bass. The sea bass. Sous -vide. Super low sous vide, set the proteins up. Yeah, we use a lot of sea water, the water that comes out of the mussels. And we're going to finish it in there. Finish it in there. So you were open not even a year, and you got your first Michelin star. 
Yes, it was very important for us. Uh, uh, very young team. We have like average 28, 29 years old. I'm 34, but uh, most of the people here are uh, in LF. Oh, the, the former food critic from the New York Times, Frank Bruni, he came here. How long were you open when Bruni came? Five months, more or less. Before I go to the tables, I see the names to, to see the language that people talk speak, right. speak. And I said, excuse me, he was like drinking coffee or finishing. I don't know if he drink coffee, but your Frank Bruni was like, what did he eat? Not that <laughs> oh, that. it was over. <laughs> it was over already. <laughs> Uh, but it was, he, he said that it was a very, very good meal. One, of the, very, one of the best meals, if yes, not the best yeah, meal they he, had that he, year. He wrote, he wrote that and it was very important. Very, it was impressive because in two days, I think like New York came to <laughs> Lisbon and to Belcanto. And we had the next six months were crazy full of American people. And still now, two years after, wow. people come and talk to me about that article. That's that great. And well, that's very, very good for us. Power of the New York Times yeah. and kudos to Frank Bruni. You see like the, the seasoning here is a few drops of lemon juice. Just acid to Just polish. Just acid to polish, yeah. Mussels, mussels, razor clam. Cody on the seaweed, full of flavor of the sea. And more mussel liqueur. It is what it is. Beautifully simple, pared down. We saw some sea bass today in the market. I want people to remember the food like here and here, not here. It's a cream sickle. Remember cream sickles? Yeah. This is the three star cream sickle. I thought I had the best meal in Portugal of my life oh, recently, but guess what? It was really recently. <laughs> this is it. This guy's great. Salud. Now we're going to go to a restaurant that features canned fish. Oh, hold your horses. I'm not talking about chicken to see a bumblebee. Europe has a tradition of great canned seafood that goes back to Stavanger, Norway, the beginning of the last century, where these cultures lived by the ocean, caught beautiful fresh fish, had to preserve them, and they canned them. So canned tuna, canned mackerel, sardines, roe, oysters, mussels, all that stuff in Europe is fantastic in cans. You go to Spain, Italy, Greece, Portugal, France, they've got entire sections of the supermarket that have gourmet canned and jarred seafood. That's what's on the menu tonight, right over here at this restaurant called Sol Pesca. There was no shop in Lisbon, or in, I think in Portugal as well, where you can find as many as the tin fish with this variety, and you could try it on the restaurant. Talk about canned fish. Do, I mean, do you love canned fish? Yeah, I do love canned fish as well, and it's, it's just amazing. Portugal is so good at it, because we... Forever. Most of it, we only work with fresh fish, not even refrigerated fish, right. not frozen fish. Right. Most of the brands, or especially the better ones, they only work with fresh fish. How, how is the business been? People receive it, you get tourists from out of town, you get locals? Was, yeah, the first year was a bit harsh, to be honest, and because it was, it was quite difficult. People are not used to... to Just one thing, canned fish. Canned fish, and the, what they are used to is really low quality ones. That's the trouble. Junk. Junk. So people had a really bad image about canned fish. But if you know how to pick them, if you pick them well, you can have really good quality in those. Thanks for okay. having us tonight and Welcome. continued success for the restaurant. Okay. Have a sip of wine. We'll toast. You're yeah. allowed to do this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can to canned fish. Just to canned fish. The southern region of Portugal, the Alentejo, is a new thriving area for viticulture. We'll spend some time in a vineyard I first visited last year, Esparayo, where they not only make great wines, but have a really lovely kitchen and restaurant as well. We have now the, the favas are really good, and so we're going to do a dish with just this. Vegetables. And Perfect. That's it. In this row here, we have some braised vegetables, like turnips, carrots, onions. So this is almost like, um, an escabeche mm. of vegetables, and mm. then we roll it out in the cabbage. Here we have some turnips and some cauliflower. Gotcha. The only cooking we're going to be doing for this dish is deep frying this. So, we have a beer batter here. Hot oil. Hope you're hungry. I'm hungry. Right, so I'm just gonna cut 
this a little bit. These are just for the vinaigrette. And these we are going to mix with this mint that we picked. For me, this is the best pairing, is favas and mint. A little bit of the chopped olives. The favas. Your olive oil, oil, which is incredibly which is, good. Yeah. A little bit of vinegar. Red cabbage puree. Red cabbage puree. Here we go. The cabbage rolls. Fava salad. Deep fried cauliflower that we had. And the deep fried turnips. So now we've got crunch. This is the raw turnip. Yep. Turn it another way. Yeah. Pickled onion. What do you call this? Watercress? Yeah, cress. Has a little pepper note too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here you have it. Taste of the garden. Beautiful, beautiful. So this is a visit to the garden, and uh, for, for this, we, we suggest our white reserve 2012. This will be a very versatile wine. You know, this will go with a light starter, but also with something with a bit more, um, something a bit stronger, a richer sauce. And this 2012 vintage was really, really great for, for the white. We're having great wines from this, from this vintage. We're in the town of Setubal, south of Lisbon. The entire coast of Portugal is dotted with lots of these little fishing towns, just like this. These are the docks, this is the commercial marina, and these boats are, I don't know, 35 or 40 feet. I see this all over Europe. You know, two, three, four-man operations max day boats. They go out to the Atlantic at night, they come back in the morning with whatever they have, and that's what's in the market. We needed a restaurant called Miguel, which is directly across the street, where their specialty is cuttlefish. Can we go wrong with that? Fishing boats behind us, cuttlefish probably came off those boats last night, and we're gonna end up sleeping on that island over there later tonight by ferry. Cuttlefish, that's what's coming up next on the menu. This is a fresh one? So it's a cephalod, it's the same family as octopus, basically. Here's the yes. body, has a bone inside, has eight tentacles. It's the family of the squid. Squid okay. and octopus. But different but Different squid, okay. yep, yep. It's very simple, the way, but... Simple's good with fresh fish. The secret is the Super. really good fish. Okay. That's ink. Getting rid of it, man. They sell that stuff. Squid ink, cuttlefish ink, to, to color pastas. Peeling squid is easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Peeling this, this is hard. She's yeah, pulling, yeah, yeah, yeah. she's working. Cuttlefish bone. Looks like the bottom of a boat. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, look at this bad boy. I mean, that's some evolutionary thing, man. That's crazy. It's shaped just like the hull of a ship. Nature's yeah, genius. Thank you, Maria. Obrigado, obrigado. Obrigado. What are you going to feed us tonight? We're going to have cuttlefish, I know. What else are we going to have? Uh, red mullet. Beautiful. Like rouge, red mullet, rouge. Same, same thing. Rouge, same thing. Uh, sardine in a fillet in the bread, grilled. It's very nice. Uh, and the special rice with the razor clams. They're alive. They are alive. They have to be alive. <sighs> Smell the, the ocean, man. The ocean. I think some of my favorite meals are places like this. Couldn't be simpler. Simple math. Get the best seafood in the world. It was caught last night. It was cooked today. We're eating it. It's super simple fried cuttlefish. I'm not even gonna put lemon on this. We've got a wonderful vino verde here. I mean, look at the color. Like, it almost looks like water. Super crisp, super thin. But great minerality, great acidity. Cuttlefish. Trust me. All this stuff needs is a little treatment, a little lemon, not too much. Does it get any better than this? Oh, the ocean. So, cameras have been in the kitchen. Apparently they're in the weeds. Did I hear they're in the weeds? Yeah, we got like 120 covers and we got the chef and Maria. Slinging it. Well, <laughs> I've been there, done that. All right, so what have you missed? Uh, here's what you missed. Ta-da! That's the red mullet, what's left of it. The liver sauce is here. Can't describe that to you, but it was great. Uh, the rice, the um, cuttlefish rice, not cuttlefish, the razor clam rice is here, and it's, it's studded with fresh cilantro. You know, when I go home, I have had cilantro with fish here, cilantro with clam, cilantro with everything. I'm gonna start using it way more than I ever did before with um, any kind of seafood preparation. It's amazing. It is just your body, your 
big old lips. Look at all the families here. Don't you this? Everyone brought their kids. It's a Friday night, and there's so many kids in this room. Hey, take your kids out to dinner. Don't leave them with the nanny. Take them out. I love this culture. All right, I'm done. No lecturing. I don't do that. Tomorrow. The Bacalao Palace in coastal Setubal reminded me of the set of Game of Thrones. Here they grow a pleasant dessert wine, Muscateus, that will pair with some typical Portuguese sweets and get a tour of this building. Hey folks, what's not to love? Miles upon miles of sun, sand, surf, quaint little towns, cosmopolitan cities, amazing seafood, beef, pork, lovely restaurants and markets, thriving viticulture. I don't know why it took me 56 years to get to Portugal, but I'll be back. Mike Colomeco's Real Food is brought to you by the continuous, generous support of the following underwriters. Extra virgin olive oil from Colavita, an Italian family brand. Rachel Ray's signature specialty food line, designed for preparing meals at home. Lou's Naturals family of brands offers all natural, minimally processed meats, free of antibiotics, hormones, and nitrites, from our family to yours. Imported from Italy, Anna Pasta is made from 100% Italian durum wheat semolina and pure spring water, slowly dried to cook al dente. Recipes online at cento.com.